Good happy Thursday morning, January 24, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, crews work to clear drains of snow ahead of rain. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. Homewood's Furniture and Design Center is having a truckload sale of refining furniture at unprecedented prices. Three days after snow blanketed Manchester, crews were preparing for another storm, this time rain clearing out catch basins in lower-lying areas to prevent any flooding. We're trying to get attempting to be prepared for that. Uh, we'll know tomorrow be better what's going to happen, but we're out there today preparing. The forecast is for possibly an inch of rain. While that's a lot of water, Shepard says they are catching a bit of a break and that it's expected to be spread out throughout the day. And the fact that the bitter cold of the past few days has moved on is also helpful. Thankfully, we'll have the warm weather, which I think the water will be able to get into the catch basins. I don't think we'll see as much icing going on, uh, but we've got to make sure those basins are open for the water to get into. Crews are also out making sure the snow is pushed back. Shepard says that'll help make sure the rain can find its way into the basins. The director says the warmer weather has loosened up the snow. That's enabling the plows to push it back easier. That should also help keep those basins clear. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man accused in woman's kidnapping behaves strangely in court. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Homewood's Furniture and Design Center is having a truckload sale of refining furniture at unprecedented prices. 1904 CR. Shackled and in a Tyvek suit, Victor Pena was brought into a Charlestown courtroom. His head and body shaking. The 38-year-old appeared to be talking to himself and at one point doubled over. His cries were audible in the courtroom. <laughs> Pena is accused of kidnapping 23-year-old Olivia Ambrose. She went missing late Saturday night after leaving a Boston bar. Surveillance photos showed Pena holding and guiding the victim who appeared intoxicated according to court documents. Yesterday afternoon, police took Pena into custody after tracking the victim and her phone to his Charlestown apartment. According to court documents, she told police Pena took her phone and would not let her leave. When detectives arrived, they could see the victim standing next to Pena crying with a horrified look on her face. I'm happy that Miss Ambrose is back home with her family. Pena's defense attorney had little to say after his client met with a court clinician. She reported that Pena appeared psychotic. This behavior appeared to be somewhat psychotic, but also bizarre. Uh, he also said Pena might be exaggerating those symptoms, so she asked for further mental health evaluation, which he'll get at Bridgewater State Hospital. At the Charlestown Courthouse, Sarah Kanji, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Salon owner spots burglar on Phone connected to new 
security system. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Andy Hershberger. Katrina Gleed has owned this salon for 10 years. She opened it in honor of her father who fought in World War II. She still gives veterans haircuts for eight bucks. Just last week, she installed security cameras that are paired with her phone and was driving home from work with her daughter Wednesday when she decided to check them out. She checked my camera and we saw someone behind my desk. We were, we were shocked. We were like, who is that at my desk? Gleed says she immediately called police and her daughter started using the voice feature that came with the system. My daughter pressed the voice button and she started yelling at him, sir, sir, what are you doing in my barber shop? You need to leave and by the way, you busted. Gleed and her daughter turned around and went back to the salon where they met police. After they secured the business, the officers started looking around. So they went upstairs to check the apartments to see if anybody heard anything, and lo and behold, they knock on the first door, and who answers the door but the guy in the video. Police say that guy is 58-year-old Julio Torres. He's been charged with burglary and criminal trespass. Gleed says the surveillance system has already paid for itself. It was unbelievable, and it was strange because my daughter just put the camera in, and had we not stopped on the side of the road, because I had forgotten something, it just had to be all the right things for this to happen. Gleed also has a salon in Windham where she's installed the same security system. Reporting live, Mandy Hirschberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Velinsky tells supporters he's likely running for governor in 2020. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulties. Give us a minute. Executive Counselor Andrew Valinsky is laying the groundwork to run for governor. In an email to activists obtained by News 9, Valinsky writes, quote, I am likely to run for governor in NH in 2020. It is a path that I have been on for some time and things are falling into place. The counselor, who was a very close supporter of Bernie Sanders in 2016, is among the most vocal progressives holding elected office in New Hampshire. He's known for his work on education funding lawsuits in the 1990s, and on the executive council, he's gained a reputation for prosecutorial questioning of Governor Chris Sununu's appointees. Are you asking me to defer? Yes. I decline to defer. <laughs> Walensky has also drawn scrutiny for undertaking his own investigation into allegations of bootlegging at state liquor stores, ultimately uncovering, according to the Attorney General's office, only legal activity. But he's shown a knack for turning conservative criticism of his agenda into a platform of its own. You need to believe in things, and you need to clearly state what it is you believe in. Those beliefs will be front and center in the statewide race. Can he fix the school funding issue as governor? without proposing an income tax or a sales tax. Top Republicans think Volinsky is getting way ahead of himself. I think this sets a new record that less than two weeks after a governor's been inaugurated, and most of New Hampshire, I think, is tired of elections, that somebody's already contemplating uh, a, a race for governor. Asked to comment today on a possible matchup with Volinsky, Governor Chris Sununu said, quote, I don't think anybody cares. 
Live at the State House in Concord, Adam Sexton, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Law enforcement officials continue to enforce Jessica's law days after storm. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. Okay, we're having technical difficulty with that video player. Here we go again. A little technical difficulty. Please give us a moment, everyone. this hour by hour in Concord starting off in the low to mid 40s ending up in the low 50s you also notice quite a few to get to in my first one actually whatever he's planning now this hour by hour in Concord starting off in the low to mid 40s ending up in the low 50s you also notice quite a few raindrops but they're falling on freezing temperatures right now in parts of northern in central New Hampshire. So while we are above freezing from Concord South, notice Laconia, Plymouth, Whitefield, Berlin, all well below freezing. That means any untreated surface is glazing over with some ice. But when will the warmer temperatures arrive? We'll look at that timeline and some heavy rain on the way in just a bit. All right, Mike, we're looking forward to those warmer temperatures. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you clear any ice or snow tomorrow before it all starts to refreeze. Remember, Jessica's Law makes it illegal to drive with snow or ice on your car. WMUR Shabon Lopez is live now, and a lot of drivers today have said they've been hit with ice on the highway. A lot of drivers have been hit with ice. Others have seen a lot of close calls. Take a look. This is how your car should look before you hit the road after a snowstorm. And now police are urging drivers to do whatever necessary to make sure they clean all of the ice and snow off their roofs. Three days after a storm and there are still drivers out on the roads with snow and ice flying off the roof of their cars. 18 wheelers and school buses, they're the worst. Enforcing Jessica's law, state police shared these photos of a tractor trailer they pulled over with eight inches of solid ice on its roof. It doesn't make me mad. It's scary out there when people don't. Donna Pinard was hit with ice during the morning commute. And the car next to me as well, it just come right off the top and hit me and hit her. Luckily, no damage to her car, but she's not alone in seeing this on busy roads. I have, and it's very scary. You know, it comes off and it flips around and it smashes on, the, luckily, the ground and not my windshield. But some companies make sure their trucks are cleared. While it may take a few passes, this device at New Hampshire Distributors clears their tractor trailers before they hit the road. Local and state police are urging other drivers to take the time to save themselves from a fine or possibly hurting or killing someone. To clear all that snow off the, the, the windshield of the vehicle, the top of the vehicle, the back of the vehicle to make sure you're driving down the road safely. Now, if you're pulled over with any snow or ice left on your vehicle anywhere, but especially the roof, if you're the first offense, you could see up to a $500 fine. Live in Manchester, Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. So everyone, please remember to clear off your car completely.
a very important detail. Apple just dismissed more than 200 employees from its autonomous vehicle group. Apple dismissed just over 200 employees from Project Titan this week. It's stressfully autonomous vehicle initiative. People familiar with the group told CNBC. A former Apple and Talis executive, Doug Field, returned to Apple in August to work on Project Titan alongside with Bob Mansfield. The Project Titan layoffs were billed initially as kind of a restructuring under a relevantly new leadership. Trump says he will not give State of the Union until after shutdown ends. The back and forth between House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and President Donald Trump over when and where the State of the Union will be delivered, if at all, came to a conclusion, if temporarily, late Wednesday night. Trump will not give a speech until after the partial government shutdown is over. And that does it for the Riley King Newscast. Right here on the Riley King Network, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.